Hey, so at Zappy Chat, where we are using conversational AI to qualify leads and book them into calendars, uh, we've learned a lot about how to properly prompt the AI into getting exactly the results we want so that our lead conversations happen seamlessly and fill up our calendars. So I wanted to pass on some of that information to you, some of the key learnings that we've had, as well as a few different examples that you can take and modify them to your specific use case. So I want to dive in first to the core elements of a prompt. Uh, number one is the role, two, the goal, and three, the context. Role, goal, and context. Now, the role is technically optional, though I would definitely include it. Uh, the goal is completely necessary and the context is recommended to have. So in terms of importance, goal is most important, followed by context, followed by the role. But you'll see in the examples below that we recommend having all three in there. So number one, the role is going to define what the AI is doing, like who they are, what their, what their sort of purpose is in terms of an actual role. Um, the goal is going to define what they're moving towards, what, what the outcome is of the specific messaging and our context of qualifying leads uh, and booking leads. It is going to be something related to the conversation. So it's where the AI should be driving the conversation towards. And then lastly, and this part is really cool, uh, in the context, we're able to give meaningful context that help direct how the AI interacts help define the, uh, define the target audience and make sure that the AI's responses are given in such a way that makes sense for the type of conversation that we're setting the AI up to have. Uh, and so a couple of notes on adding that meaningful context before we dive into some examples that'll show you how all of this plays out. Um, number one, preferring short and focused sentences really help direct the AI. So rather than try to create run on long sentences with a whole bunch of information in a single sentence, try to think how you can break it down into short sentences that you might use to communicate directly to say a fifth grader. Um, add important keywords and avoid unnecessary information. Try to keep the information that you're providing relevant and helpful. Uh, the more flowery our language gets in the prompt, the more it can distract and uh, can lead to unwanted results in our responses. Next, define the target audience. Define who exactly the AI is talking to, who exactly this response is being written for. Um, and then also we can control the tone, style, and length of the output and the format. Um, the format isn't so much uh, relevant to our specific use case here, but uh, defining the tone and the style of response is really great and defining the length. Um, you know, for text-based conversations where the AI is chatting back and forth and we're trying to appear human, I typically like to limit it to 250 characters or so, so that we can uh, keep the AI from writing a novel in a response. But hey, let's take a look at two uh, really good examples that we have here, and I'll highlight uh, some of the key features in them that uh, you can use in any given context, any given situation. So example one here is Vitalia, who works for a wellness center called Vitalik. Um, and so let's just dive into the role here. So first of all, we're defining what the AI's role is. A big piece here is giving the AI a name. Um, and so just starting off by saying, you are Vitalia, you are Andrew. Um, and then moving on from there to give a definition of you know what their job is, what their role is in the conversation. So here we're saying you are a booking assistant working for a wellness center named Vitalik. Um, so that gives that important role context right there. Um, in this situation, we are uh, getting the name and the intention from their first interaction. Uh, this portion is very much optional. Don't feel like you need to include this type of thing, uh, but wanted to show you uh, this feature here because what we've done is we've put in phrases like Vitalia must remember and store this name and use it for the whole conversation. Uh, and also remembering the names and using their name in all her responses is what makes Vitalia very friendly and considerate. Vitalia is super friendly and positive. She always uses positive phrases and she uses emojis constantly. Now, I know this seems repetitive, but these short direct sentences, while repetitive, give the AI that sort of re-emphasized instruction. And so in our tests with this specific prompt, 
uh, Vitalia here responds with an emoji in almost every single SMS um, and uses the user's name in almost every single SMS as well. It's not 100%, but it is in such a way that it remains uh, personalized in every single response uh, and has that human light touch of using the emojis. So this is a type of format that you could take if you wanted to have that sort of interaction. Um, but honestly, in terms of role, you can go as simple as you are Vitalia. You are a booking assistant working for a wellness center named Vitalik. Just giving that role is gonna help keep the AI on track and moving forward. Uh, now let's talk about the goal. So in the goal here, this is where we are going to define what the AI is driving towards, what the point of this conversation is. Once more, to show you a simple version, it would look something like Vitalia, uh, Vitalia's main goal is to book appointments. Um, you could just put that in there and it will be totally fine to book off of that. Um, but I think it's cool to show you uh, a little more complex use case and how we set that up in the prompt. So here you can see Vitalia's main goal is to assist individuals in their pursuit of overall health and well being by connecting them with a professional health coach. So we're defining the conversation that yes, we are booking them into an appointment with a health coach, but we're even driving at the why behind that. We're assisting individuals in pursuit of their overall health and well-being. Um, so you can include some of your client's language or some of your business's uh, you know, uh, mission statement type language in some of here, and that can help provide that greater context for the AI. Uh, here we give um, some instruction around Vitalia acting as a knowledgeable companion, providing information, tips, and support across various aspects, uh, maintains a caring and informative tone. Um, so in here, as well as in the context down here, we can uh, bring in information about the tone. Um, and uh, she engages users in a compassionate and understanding manner, actively listening to their health concerns, offering guidance, and providing resources to support their well-being journey. So we're giving a lot of instruction around how this conversation should be handled and moving towards the goal. Uh, this next paragraph here, we dive into uh, Vitalia engages in any conversation. She must always determine what are the goals of the person she is talking to, what kind of practice the person knows, or what kind of practice the person is interested in. Um, and so this is giving a few different examples of what Vitalia can ask. Now, a key thing here, uh, Vitalia is not going to ask all of these questions. These kind of just give a, diver a diversity of questions that she could be asking. And if you use this prompt, uh, the AI is going to ask one or two of these. Um, sometimes we'll ask more follow-up questions. Sometimes we'll ask shorter. But if you're trying to simulate the human experience, that is what we're going for here. In a later example, I'll show you more of what it looks like to try to uh, ask questions one by one if you have specific goals to accomplish along the way towards booking an appointment. Um, but also we include in here a must. So Vitalia must also determine what the person thinks is the main obstacle to achieving this goal or goals. Um, and then after the person has answered these questions and shared valuable information, Vitalia must say Vitalik can help this person and explain uh, all that Vitalik coaches will help the user achieve this goal and overcome any obstacle that is presented. Now, this is a good point for me to say that while these examples are solid, they're not perfect. We could probably engineer this one a little better into being a shorter, uh, more direct sentence rather than a little bit of a hodgepodge run on, but we're still getting good results in here because of how robust and extensive this prompt is. Uh, and then lastly, we say, Vitalia must ask for the contact information before offering to book a free session, because in this we're imagining people messaging in on social media where we don't have a phone number and email. And so from this, it will prompt Vitalia to gather that information. Uh, and then lastly, we have instruction for transitioning over to booking. And so saying that once Vitalia has received contact information for the lead, uh, she must offer two available times to schedule a free session. Vitalia should determine what time works for the user and then book the appointment. So in here, this is a little redundant with what we have on the back end for your booking bot, but it's still helpful to for Vitalia to understand where she should move to offering times and booking into an appointment. It should come after she has had this connective conversation about their goals and obstacles and after she has gathered that contact information. Um, 
Once more, this is a little bit of a looser structure. And so if you really strictly want to gather specific information, if you want the AI to ask question one, question two, question three, uh, then that'll be more the second example that I'll walk through in a little less detail here in a minute. Uh, but then lastly, down here in the context, uh, this is just purely an overall context for the conversation. So we can include a lot of different types of things here. So uh, we include some information about the business. Vitalik is a holistic wellness center. Um, you know, once more, including like a mission statement or uh, tagline service statement type uh, phrases in here. Um, and so like uh, walking through what sort of services are provided uh, and then going through um, what they what they provide overall. So really walking through like mission, vision and uh, services in here. We also uh, list in with a team of experienced professionals. They offer uh, personalized wellness plans, evidence-based practices, and a supportive environment to empower individuals to enhance their physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Um, so once more, solid copy about the type of service and how they accomplish the goal for their leads. Um, and then we give some more nitty-gritty instruction, like the response should be less than 250 characters, the response should be conversational in tone, uh, and then we also, in this instance, provide the user's email is contact.email and their phone is contact.phone so that we can send across that information over to the AI at the point that it is gathered. Um, because if they respond with that, it'll populate into the contact field in your CRM and then that will be passed over to the AI uh, in the over in the prompt through our snapshot. Um, so let's take a look at another example here. And so you can see that comparing this one uh, with this one, we have a significantly larger portion in the goal um, and a little less in the role. Uh, and also in this one, we included an example conversation, which is also an option you can do. Um, in a prompt engineering, it's called either a uh, single shot or a, um, what is it? A, a one shot, a few shot, or a zero shot prompt. So this first one would technically be a zero shot prompt because we're not giving any sort of example. Uh, this would be a one shot or single shot. And then you could even do a few shot prompt where you give multiple examples. Um, but we found that trying to give multiple examples of an entire conversation in a single prompt uh, does more confusing and harm than good. So we stick to a one shot prompt for the specific use case of conversational AI. So just backing up to do a quick walkthrough here. Uh, here we have Claire, a friendly, helpful, em empathetic marketing coach assistant who works for a company called Growth Mentor. Claire is very knowledgeable about marketing, loves helping people with marketing solutions. Claire must always use the user's name in the whole conversation. So you can see in here that we're encouraging the AI to use the name again, um, as well as giving Claire some, uh, some context into her role. Uh, but the interesting piece of this prompt, I think, is the goal. Uh, you can see bold text in here. That obviously doesn't carry over into the prompt, but it's intentionally bolded here to show you that these are key phrases that help give the AI instruction for kind of executing a multi-step prompt. So you can see here, Claire must always follow the following conversation structure, always making sure she completes each step before going on to the next one. So if you include this in your goal section, um, and I should also clarify that you can copy and paste this entire thing into your OpenAI prompt field, and it will function appropriately there. Uh, so that includes the role, colon, goal, colon, et cetera. Um, and so if you uh, are doing sort of a multi-step, you can include this where making sure she completes each step before going on to the next one, and then have first step, second step, third step, fourth step, fifth, um, and for the sake of consistency, it'd probably be best to include step in there. Uh, and uh, by doing this, you can actually get the AI to walk through step by step. Um, a, a point here that I should have covered earlier is that actually uh, with any sort of open AI prompting here, when you are prompting the AI, it is always, always, always uh, important to test and see what sort of results you get, not just a single conversation, but maybe two or three conversations, uh, and see, particularly when you're trying to do multi-steps like this, if there's a step where sometimes the AI skips or the AI um, ignores a step, uh, then it might make sense to come in here and edit the prompt and try again. 
Um, so even though this might be a good template for you to use, you're not going to know the results that you get until you actually test your specific prompt. Uh, because we've seen again and again that while a specific format works, we can change some details to make it for another business and it starts to uh, skip pieces. It starts to behave differently. And so it's important for us to always test and come back and tweak, add, um, so you can see things in here, like never go to the fifth step if they have not shared this info. Uh, this was because the prompt engineering question here realized that it was beginning to um, go to the fifth step to say, we found the right mentor for you and offer available slots. It was moving on to booking without uh, accomplishing this piece. And so um, you can provide a lot of instruction. You can provide a little, uh, but by doing this sort of breakout into first, second, third, fourth, fifth step, you can uh, really dictate an entire flow of conversation that the AI needs to move through. Um, in context down here, it's just another example of context. I'm not going to work walk through this in detail because it's just a good starting point uh, and so you can swap it out with your own type of copy for your business or for your clients. Um, and then down here in the example, we can actually give an example conversation of responses from the user that we might expect and uh, good answers from the bot that might demonstrate the type of tone, might demonstrate the type of transitions that we want the bot to make through steps. Um, and then lastly, we actually describe the example conversation so that the bot understands, uh, the AI understands exactly why this example conversation was provided. So all in all, these are some prompt learnings that we have found in uh, helping hundreds of agencies uh, get their AI up and rolling for them and their clients. And it's a continued development and um, what I always say is more of an art than a science. So uh, none of this is uh, gospel scripture rules, but these are um, principles that you can apply to your prompt crafting and to creating a really rock star prompt that delivers excellent value for your client's business. And that then you could replicate that template across your different clients uh, and make it easy to roll through. So if you want to try these out, uh, go give them a test with your Zappy Chat AI uh, see what sort of results you get, come back, tweak different things within it. If you get stuck on something, feel free to reach out to us with your prompt. Uh, and our team, you know, our team actually enjoys getting to dig into that sort of problem versus uh, your general tech support problem. So feel free to send over your actual prompt and we'd love to take a look and give you, give you pointers um, based on what you, what sort of results you're getting and what you're looking for. So anyway, that's it on prompts. I know this turned into a longer video. Uh, but it's just a fun and exciting piece to dig into.